You're listening to episode 57 of the Confident Writer Podcast with Jane Pike. Hey team. So in the first instance, I want to say thank you so much for all of the feedback that I got from the last episode. I was kind of overwhelmed by it, to be honest, in the best possible way. (laughs) So if you were included in amongst those people that got in touch, thank you. I do really appreciate you taking the time to reach out and tell me how it impacted you. I find it really, really interesting and valuable to hear your stories and it just really helps me to understand more about these kind of conversations that we're having, I guess, and the work that um, I'm hoping to put out into the world. I recently also did a webinar or an online workshop, whichever you want to call it, that was called Power, Presence and Partnership. And I think in the midst of that, I talked quite a lot about presence. I talked about the relation to partnership and hopefully I touched a little bit on power. However, I wanted to talk more about that today. And I guess in a way, this is an extension of the podcast episode that I did on mindful anger, which was also another one that I got quite a lot of feedback on. And interestingly, the more conversations I have around this topic, around the manifestation of a healthy sense of power and aggression, the more it's opening up different streams of opinion and thought. And I'm having some incredible conversations in my Joyride community as well. So I wanted to expand more on that today. I also wrote a couple of posts on my Facebook page over the last little while because I really believe this to be as valid and as necessary as any other conversation that we have, yet in the in general circles it doesn't get as much airtime. And I think partially it's obvious why that's the case. Talking about anger, talking about aggression is something that is not necessarily seen as an, what's the word that I'm searching for? Seen as something that we're looking to move towards. And I think when it comes to horsemanship or even any kind of discussion in the context of partnership, it's something that if you discuss anger or discuss aggression, it is seen as a problematic ingredient in that discourse, in that discussion. And I guess what I want to offer into the mix is my very real belief and my very real experience with what I will call mindful anger and mindful aggression, which are the healthy examples or the healthy sides of what we might think of as um, fairly powerful and potentially dark energies. So let's start then with actually thinking about our own personal associations with the words because we have a somatic or a body-based response to words such as power, to words such as aggression, to words such as assertiveness and anger and that will inform Firstly, your response to them. Secondly, what it means to you. And thirdly, how welcoming you are of that experience in your own reality. So I know for me as a woman, um, we are, I am, as someone who identifies as a woman, I am informed by the culture around me, right? And that culture exists in my body. It resonates in my body and it can be diametrically opposed to my conscious understanding 
of how it is I want to show up in the world and what it is those words mean to me. So what I mean by that is typically, and again, I'll speak as a woman because I am one and also because I work mainly with women, but this definitely is a conversation that is not um, gender exclusive. I will say that as a woman, those terms are not terms which are grouped together with what it means to be a good, quote unquote, woman. Assertiveness, aggression, power. If I think in the first instance what those words mean to me, I come up with a feeling or an image of dominance in some way. Now for me, the type of partnership that I'm looking to create with my horse is very far removed from that. I don't want to be a dominant rider. I'm not interested in creating a dominant partnership. I'm not interested in using the depths of my physicality, if you like, to create a situation that wields power over anyone else, let alone my horse. And so for me to come into a place where I have been accepting of the healthy manifestations of power and aggression and assertion, I have had to unpack and unpick what that has meant for me in the first instance, what it feels like in my body and what comes up in my mind when I think about those words. So if you think about those words now, what comes up for you? If you think about power, if you think about aggression, if you think about anger, and then you think about mindful power, mindful aggression, mindful anger, does that make a difference for you? Or do you even know what that means when I say that? And then further on from that, who have your role models been for anger, for aggression? Is it something that you would aspire to experience or is it something that because of the experiences of those things in your life, be that through a a family figure, be that through an experience and so on and so forth, you actually seek to remove yourself from that emotional range because for you it indicates something that is not a part of what you want to be experiencing or cultivating. The reason this is really important is because all of these things that I'm talking about, power, aggression, anger, the mindful forms of them, are essential and given parts of our human experience, meaning that Regardless of whether you see them as good or bad, regardless of whether you will want to be identifying with that, you will experience them at some point. That's just part of who we are as humans. And so my point, I guess, is that your preference for them does not disclude you from the experience of them. And if you don't have a healthy relationship with each of those elements, each of those parts of you, that is when we get into a situation where we are not the master of them, but they are the master of us. Every emotion, every experience that we come into is, of course, uh, fleeting, is, is transient and mercurial, right? But if we don't allow each expression to be felt, recognized, and then to choose where it is we want to channel that energy, that energy goes somewhere. It doesn't mean if, if you choose not to feel angry because angry, anger isn't becoming to you, if you think of aggression as a negative quality, 
which of course they can be. I will put that out there as well. I'm not suggesting that everyone in rage is like, oh, let's accept that and move on. It's not about that at all. What I'm saying is that if you don't allow for that experience, then you are not in a place where you're able to master the physiology of what they represent and what they present, which of course is inevitably going to come up. And then that removes you from the choice of where to direct that energy. So when we talk about the nervous system and we talk about this lovely place, this this intermediary place, I guess, where we're which is typically called the window of tolerance. Um, We could call that the window of presence or the window of okayness or the window of I've got this, meaning that when we're in that space, we feel like we can handle what it is that's coming at us. And every experience in that zone has not got bigger than our body. Now, typically when we talk about moving into flight, fight or freeze, we are discussing how our nervous system responds under threat. But of course, there are healthy manifestations, there are healthy qualities within the sympathetic channel and they are mindful aggression, they are determination, they are power, they are what gives you forward momentum, they are what allows you to be in touch with your own backbone. They are what allows you to step up and assert a boundary and they are what allows you to do hard things. So we need a little bit of this sympathetic activation. We need a little bit of this power. And so when I'm talking about power, when I'm talking talking about aggression, when I'm talking about mindful anger, and I'm going to put mindful in front of all of those words, what I'm talking about is the experience of kind of like, hmm, you know, when you're like, here I am, I can do this. It's a resolute determination. It's a feeling of like, I'm staking my claim. I'm, I have a little bit of something in me that connects me to my backbone. I'm taking up all of the space that's owed to me and I matter. Here I am and I matter, right? Right. It's a restoration of integrity and dignity in the body in the face of what potentially can be difficult or challenging or uncomfortable circumstances. So to me, these are qualities that I've really had to step into. And I've stepped into them not at the expense of the other qualities which I look to cultivate, compassion, love, understanding, peacefulness, but in the recognition that they simultaneously coexist and without a little bit of, hmm, a little bit of something, something, then essentially I'm flaccid, <laughs> right? So when it comes to writing, this, these, the, the ability to cultivate a healthy sense of your own power, a healthy sense of aggression, a healthy sense of anger is not anger to or aggression towards. It's an internal circuit system, an internal circular loop that allows you to step up, to be in touch with that healthy hmm inside of you that's like, come on, I can, I'm, I'm, I can get over this, this part that's currently challenging me or I can step up and do this thing that I want to do. That is the energy that allows you to do those things. Why this is of particular interest to me is because, well, for all of those reasons, but also because I recognize that we have an affinity to be really non-direct about what it is that we're experiencing. And it's my personal belief that as a general rule, the majority of us are quite non-confrontational. Now, this is culturally specific as well. I've lived in places um, such as the Middle East, there are different parts of Europe where the culture and the community, the conversation or the language promotes a directness of communication. But where I have grown up and the circles that I have moved in generally, really that kind of directness is not appreciated or applauded. We are very non-direct, we're very non-confrontational and it's seen as rude or um, kind of out of line or abrasive to be direct about what it is you're experiencing, to be direct about what it is that you feel. 
And if we think also about women, again, just to to throw this in, I know it's not all women listening, but just again, this really informs my personal beliefs and conversation. Leadership up until very, very recently has not been something that women have been allowed to step into leadership roles, corporate leadership roles, leadership roles within um, positions of power, I guess. And that is still ongoing. I mean, if you think about wage disparities, if you think about representation and inclusiveness on different boards, different, you know, I don't have to go on about it. We all kind of know the situation. And of course, there are different layers of that different degrees of marginalization, different degrees of non-inclusiveness, which extend in even deeper ways towards the BIPOC or um, Black Indigenous people of colour communities and so on and so forth. But that's a conversation for a different day. So if we, if I use this example or use this uh, knowledge of women in leadership and, and women in positions of power, that has not been allowed for or celebrated, Right. However, that does not mean that the desire or the intrinsic energy of wanting to lead does not exist within women. Just because it hasn't been allowed to rise to the surface does not mean it's not present, right? And so when that energy is not allowed to be expressed in a healthy way, when healthy leadership, when healthy power, when healthy aggression, when healthy assertiveness is not allowed to find its natural course, it mutates. And that is when it becomes passive aggression, when it becomes the passive manifestations of the true form of the energy or the pure form of the energy And it becomes something that it was never meant to be, simply because it hasn't been allowed. The real energy of it hasn't been allowed. And so when you have that expression over a long period of time, you have that mutation, you have that lack of real and true knowing in terms of that energy, that becomes the norm, right? But actually it's like a cultural lid that's been put on the container of what essentially is really wanting to be expressed in a, in a way that promotes equanimity and freedom of thought and voice. So now we have a situation where being direct, even using the words such as power, aggression, assertiveness, has a response in our bodies, creates a response in our bodies. And we dance around how it is that we feel. We don't like to admit something is hard. We don't like to use the word work even, especially in relation to partnership. We don't like to use the word work. We don't like to use the, we don't like to think of ourselves being aggressive because that expression of those energies has been used against us in ways that have been dominating and disempowering. And so when we, when we don't want to mirror the same, we avoid any representation of that. However, in that denial, we also deny the healthy expressions of those things and we remove ourselves from the ability to truly create change in those areas. So I'm going to give you an example, a writing example of what it is that I mean. And I'm going to use the example of me working with my young horse, D, who I started myself and who is still quite green. We're still going through lots of, um, you know, just green horse things, which aren't an issue there. It's really interesting for me. Um, I'm really enjoying the process and I deeply love my horse. So the other day when I took him out into um, a really big space to ride, he was really on his toes. And I am a rider that is not addicted to adrenaline. That is not why I ride. I see those riders out there, you know, you see clips on Facebook and YouTube of them going through different things. And A, it's not how I want to show up anyway. B, that does not look like a fun time to me. And C, like I say, I don't do it for the adrenaline kick. So he was really on his toes. And I had an, a flashback, I would call it a somatic flashback, a body-based flashback, which is, of course, energies from the past making themselves known in the present and kind of informing or attempting to inform how it is I will navigate this situation. And if I was to listen to that energy, 
that and and the magnification of the itty bitty shitty committee in response to that or the critical voice it said to me you need to take it down you need to go back to a safe space to do this let's go back in the round pen and work him is clearly kind of you know upset and you don't want to put either of you in a compromising position now I will add a disclaimer here by saying that safety is absolutely paramount I have worked with my horse to the point where we have a really solid relationship going. He he knows he has great groundwork and in handwork. He he knows the answers to the questions that I'm asking him. And had I thought that that wasn't the case, had I thought that he was out of his depth and we were both out of our depth to the point where our safety was potentially compromised, then I would have no qualms about taking it back and have done and will continue to do should I think that was the case in the future. However, in this particular instance, I knew that this was one of those necessary ugh points where you're like, you have to see through what is presenting in the moment, in the situation you're in, that it was a learning experience that was necessary for us to move through and that it was going to be relatively difficult. Um, Not difficult, but like difficult in terms of what I needed to muster to be okay with that, right? He's a really big horse. I won't go through all the disclaimers, but blah, blah, blah. So firstly, I knew he knew the answer to the questions. Secondly, I knew that I could competently deal with what it was that was presenting. And thirdly, I knew this was actually an important situation for us to navigate. So in that moment, I had two choices, which was to downgrade and go back to the safe space And I knew that if I did that, I would be really disappointed with myself afterwards that it was like I would have been having that to and fro conversation about like you could have done that. You know, is this what you're going to do each time? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go into that cycle. And so I got a little bit pissed off, I would say, pissed off with myself, right? This is the difference. There there was an anger, a mindful anger where I was aware of the conversation that the itty bitty shitty committee was having with me. I was aware that that was not a truthful representation of where I currently stood and the feeling rising, the activation rising within me, which was a mindful aggression, which was a mindful anger, was not directed at anyone except to give me the necessary force to step up and say, let's do this. We can do this. It gave me the necessary chutzpah to be effective as a handler so that I wasn't dancing around the edges, but I was looking directly at what it was that was presenting. And my communication was crisp and clear enough for my horse to feel a sense of safety in that situation and for both of us to move towards a better feeling place. And that is exactly what happened. It allowed me to step out of the space of being passive and into the space of being clear, direct and effective. And that is the healthy practice of mindful anger and mindful aggression. Now, I shared this story on social media and I also talked a little bit about it in Joyride. And I said to my Joyriders, the experience of that was not necessarily joyful, but it was super satisfying, right? And it was hard. It was work. As I was riding, I, it was work. It was work on myself, right? And it was work because I recognized this was uh, an uncomfortable place for me to be, but the uncomfortable, the uncomfortableness didn't mean it wasn't safe. The uncomfortableness didn't mean it wasn't necessary. And the uncomfortableness didn't mean I couldn't do it. So I had to uncouple those things in my mind where typically we've trained ourselves into grouping together really tightly. The idea that if we feel discomfort, that somehow we're in peril. And that, I guess, is the training that I've been doing and everything that I've been doing in Joyride that is just making itself known in my body now, where I didn't have to think about it so much as a conscious decision, but the intelligence of my own body sorted it out. And I had enough of that healthy, sympathetic activation to go, actually, you know what? Step aside. Let's do this. When I shared that story, I had 
I mean, all the time, everyone's lovely. Don't get me wrong. This is not, um, this is not a criticism of everyone, but what is really interesting is people going, oh, I don't actually think that was aggression. I don't actually think it was anger. I think that's a really, um, wrong way of kind of talking about it. I think what you were was clear and, um, and compassionate and, you know, so on and so forth. And I would say, yes, but it was anger and assertiveness and aggression that got me there, right? It does not mean that I responded in a way that was unfair. It does not mean that I used physical force to wield or manipulate or force my horse to do something that he wasn't mentally, emotionally or physically prepared to do. It's none of those things. It's an internal circuit system that connects you to your own sense of worth, to your own ability and to a bigger possibility for yourself in the moments when you need it. And we, we need that. We need to look directly at it and we need to embrace it and we need to go, this is hard. I'm not going to pretend I'm playing. I'm not going to pretend that it's like a softer version than what it is because I can sit in this as much as I can sit in those other versions that we that are more typically presented like playfulness like love like compassion they these aren't mutually exclusive states these aren't mutually exclusive states and one is very necessary you know to get yourself out of despondency hopelessness shame mindful aggression is the antidote to that a healthy sense of your own power if you don't have that if you don't have that own boundary that boundary system that comes up in support of you then it's very hard to oscillate out of those places so I guess this is a invitation if you like to get curious about your own relationship with power with mindful power mindful aggression mindful anger to think about your willingness to directly look at more challenging things and to sit with it, to directly look at work or discomfort and sit with it and not have to diminish it or make it softer than it actually is. And to recognize that in doing that, it doesn't remove you from the more favorable if you like or acceptable elements of what we're striving towards which is you know love and compassion and kindness these aren't exclusive states and even to get to more encompassing uh, experiences of those we need to honor the reality of what presents and by skipping over that side of ourselves and going straight to kindness, compassion, acceptance, we can miss the lessons that come up. We can miss the very real messages of our body that are informing us about how to move through a situation or the reality of what's presenting and what's needed in that situation for us. So I hope this makes sense. It's a really, it's a, I think an incredibly valuable discussion, one that I'm really fascinated by. The whole fourth pathway that I'm putting together in Joyride right now is all to do with creating this healthy sense of power within yourself because I think it's, uh, yeah, it's just vital, basically. It's so vital. Any questions? I'd love to hear them and any feedback, so, so welcome. Please share it with me, jane at confidentwriter.online. And of course, if you want to dive in, you can work with me. You can jump on my website, confidentrider.online. I've just opened up one-on-one coaching again. Joyride, of course, is there for you. It is the place to be. But until the next episode, enjoy. Happy riding. Have the best day possible. And I will catch you on the flip side. Mm-hmm.